So I want to discuss this ongoing saga involving Jeremy Corbyn and the press um, repeating claims being made against him um, in a particular area, and that is the allegation that he spied um, or sold secrets to communists in the 1980s. Now, before I get into the, the, the gist of this video, I want to be very clear um, if people weren't already familiar with this, I'm not a Jeremy Corbyn supporter. I'm not a Corbynite. I'm certainly not on the hard left. And um, there are many areas of Jeremy Corbyn's leadership, his positions on important subjects that I think are important to call into question. I take issue with some of the people around Jeremy Corbyn. Uh, Stalin apologist Seamus Milne, for instance, who is Corbyn's leading advisor. Um, I take issue with John McDonnell and his um, calls to harass political opponents. And I take issue with a lot of Jeremy Corbyn's um, inconsistency. For example, his his claim that he's all about human rights, yet he praises communist dictators like Fidel Castro. Not to mention his very dubious attitude to terrorism. Um, so there is uh, a lot of areas, I think, there is legitimate criticism of Jeremy Corbyn to be had. But without question, ever since he became leader, the right-wing tabloids have been hell-bent on vilifying him at every single step. And it has to be said that far from wanting to clamp down on a free press, his response has been quite, um, given the personal abuse that he has received from them, the personal vilification, his response has been quite measured. And I want to really challenge um, a notion that the, that certain people are pushing. pushing. Excuse me if I slight this because of a rather painful mouth ulcer at the moment, so please excuse that. Well, uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to read out a report from the eye, which, okay, is a centre-left paper, but I don't think you could call it Corbynite. Um, and this is a report. It's not too long, so I'll read it all out if you bear with me. Jeremy Corbyn went on the offensive last night, warning billionaire press barons that change is coming. Goaded by wild and entirely false reports that he spied for Czechoslovakia in the 1980s, the Labour leader gave notice that a Labour government would act to curb the excesses of elements of the media. This is a reference to him pushing for Levison Part 2. In a video message released on social media, he said, we've got news for them. Change is coming. He ridiculed the suggestion that he pass information to an agent of the Czech STB intelligence agency. The report originally in the Sun that he had met the Czech spy has led to a succession of claims about his links to communist era spies. He named the Sun owned by Rupert Murdoch, the Daily Mail owned by Lord Rothermeyer, the Daily Telegraph owned by the Barclay Brothers and the Daily Express owned by Richard Desmond, who is in the process of selling it to the Trinity Mirror. Accusing the papers of all going a little bit James Bond with their claims, he said, it's easy to laugh but something more serious is happening. Publishing these ridiculous smears that have just been refuted by Czech officials show just how worried the media bosses are at the prospect of a Labour government. They're right to be. Labour will stand up to the powerful and corrupt and take the side of the many, not the few. A free press is essential for democracy, and we don't want to close it down. We want to open it up. At the moment, much of our press isn't very free at all. In fact, it's controlled by billionaire tax exiles who are determined to dodge paying their fair share for our public vital services. They're continuing to resort to lies and smears. Well, we've got news for them. Change is coming. The Sun has defended its reports of his meeting with an agent as being in the public interest. Now, this guy, this agent, I believe his name is Jan um, sorry, Kochi. Uh, I, I don't know the exact pronunciation, but from what I've heard of him so far, he seems like a bit of a fantasist. The same guy has claimed that the Czech government was behind the Live Aid concert in 1985, which, common knowledge would show you, was organised by Bob Geldof in mid-year. So he hardly seems like a credible source. Also, there's practical things to raise. 
um, whilst Corbyn is certainly well to the left, he was a backbench MP. So he's hardly going to be privy to personal state secrets being discussed, for example, in the inner sanctums of the Thatcher government. Um, you know, if you're going to hire a spy, you'd think it would be someone a bit up higher up the pecking order. Um, so that certainly raises questions. But what I want to challenge is the, the absurd response that some people are making here. I, I, I emphasised when I was reading that out that Jeremy Corbyn was clear that he supports a free press, but he is calling for more accountability, basically. And I happen to agree with that. There's many areas I disagree with Corbyn on. In this particular area, I think he's right. I do think that the the press in this country has far, far, far too much power. I mean, people say we have libel laws. And I've been in rather heated debates about this this evening. People said, oh, well, Jeremy Corbyn can sue them. But they're failing to recognise that if Jeremy Corbyn took that approach, if he tried to sue the Sun, that would only galvanise their phony argument Oh, it's an attack on press freedom. And what I have a problem with is this pretext of press freedom being used as basically for them to hide behind anything. So they can smear someone publicly and basically say we can get away with it because, hey, it's press freedom. You know, don't underestimate what these people can do. Look at the case of the landlord of uh, Joe Yates. That was a high profile murder case in Bristol. The tabloids totally smeared that man. He turned out to be totally innocent. I ended up getting damages, uh, financial damages, but the point is there's a fundamental rottenness at the core of the tabloid press. These are people who can give, but they can't take, just like schoolyard bullies. You know, they, they smear someone on the front cover. You'll be lucky if you get a small apology on page 30. And I think that's wrong. And I think those who constantly bring up this argument about freedom of the press don't seem to recognise that with that comes press accountability. At the moment, there's very, 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 very little press accountability from these powerful tycoons. When was the last time Paul Dacre of the Daily Mail showed his face to the public? Where's the accountability there? For all his questionable areas, at least Jeremy Corbyn is elected. And that's, that's the, the premise that I really have a problem with, is the idea that tabloid rags can say anything they want under the guise of press freedom. But if anyone challenges them, then they're attacking press freedom. I.e., they're not accountable somehow. Why shouldn't Jeremy Corbyn be allowed to defend his reputation? What they're doing is they're repeating these claims that seem to have very little basis in fact. Why do I say that? Because in the particular day in question, um, in May 1987, I believe it was May 24th, 1987, Parliament was actually in recess. This is the day they claim that Corbyn met this man, uh, or he claimed it and they're repeating it. The, the ex-spy claimed this. The son is repeating it. Parliament was in recess. It also happened to be the day that Corbyn's mother passed away. Now that is pretty low. No one here is smearing him, but you know, they're using a, a personal family situation, uh, ignoring a personal family situation that he had to do it and to, to repeat that sort of baseless, now debunked claim. Um, in my opinion, they should issue an apology to Jeremy Corbyn for this, but they're never going to. Because they're fundamentally arrogant people. They, they, they have no humility whatsoever. And I would implore people, if like me you are wary of Jeremy Corbyn, you must also be wary of the power of the press. And do not be hoodwinked into thinking that when they shout about press freedom, I mean, the Sun had an absurd picture today. It was an unflattering picture of Corbyn. Uh, and then... Uh, a line about him wanting to attack press freedom, but he clearly said that that isn't what they're intending to do. He's calling for more accountability. What's wrong with that? Why shouldn't the press be more accountable? 
And I think that is a fundamental issue here. This is not just about Jeremy Corbyn. It goes well beyond that. These people have the power to can you know to sway general elections. Look at the track record. I mean, I believe it was the nineteen ninety two election. The Sun had the headline: "Will the last person to leave the country please turn off the lights?" When they were attacking Neil Kinnock, they've attacked every left wing Labour leader ever. And I will defend the Sun's right to dislike the left and to criticise the left. But they should not be allowed to get away with repeating baseless smears. That's the issue. And I have to say it infuriates me that the premise of the argument, that press freedom means they can do anything they want, that mentality needs to be challenged.